I'm Joel Rutherford, and this is the orientation to the trade lesson that we are covering here at Muscle Shoals Career Academy uh, in the Building Sciences Department. Uh, please pay close attention to this. Make sure you take some notes. There will be uh, a test over this when we complete it with the written lesson. Okay, first of all, I want to talk about uh, what what we're trying to accomplish with this unit. What are our objectives? Um, your objectives are to identify career opportunities in carpentry trade, uh, find out about the skills and characteristics that are needed. Um, we want to talk a little bit about Skills USA, and also I want to touch briefly on the importance of safety in the construction industry. Now, first of all, what is NCCER? NCCER stands for the National Center for Construction, Education, and Research. Uh, it's a national organization. Um, its goal is to make tra uh, training consistent throughout the country. And finally, it's competency-based. Uh, competency-based means that credentials are given based on what trainees can physically do, more so than um, what they can say or what they can regurgitate on a test. Now, when you start into the construction trades, you're going to be essentially an apprentice. Even though you may be working for a non-union contractor, uh, you're still learning about the trade. And more times than not, uh, your employer will pair you with a journeyman carpenter or someone that's more experienced. Um, and you will, you will have the responsibility for of learning from that person. Now, what is a journeyman carpentry? A journeyman carpenter uh, is employed by smaller firms. Um, scratch that. Okay, a journeyman carpenter is a carpenter uh, that has mastered the carpentry trade. Um, someone that has been in it a while, someone that knows the ins and outs, someone that knows the ropes. Um, and the term comes from the old, uh, the, from the old English culture um, and when a person had learned enough that they could journey away from a master carpenter, they were termed journeyman. So that's where the, uh, the term journeyman comes from. And journeyman carpenters that are employed by smaller firms are uh, more likely to perform a variety of tasks. Uh, carpenters employed by larger forms will specialize in one skill area. So if you work for a smaller firm, you're gonna have to know a lot more and you're also gonna learn a lot more, which means you'll be va more valuable as time goes on. Uh, now, what is a crew leader? A crew leader is similar to a foreman. It's a person who's responsible for the work of several carpenters or other craftspersons. Now, stepping on up the hierarchy, uh, a supervisor um, would be responsible for several crews, and that would mean that they would have several crew leaders working under them. The next step up is a superintendent. Uh, a superintendent uh, would be over an entire job in a lot of cases. Um, they, may they would be responsible for the work of electricians, heating and air men, plumbers. Now, they would most likely not employ all of those different trades, but still they would be responsible for coordinating them, making sure that when a building is built that all of those different, the work of all of those different trades works together. And above that is a project manager. A project manager um, is more in the office. Uh, they would work side by side and in a partnership with the superintendent, but their work is more in the office. And they would handle communications with owners, uh, designers like architects and engineers, and also field personnel. Now let's talk a little bit out more about apprentices. Um, an apprenticeship program is a training program where persons entering the trade would learn from someone who has mastered the program. 
And it is the job of the, of the apprentice to learn. The journeyman's job is to teach. Um, if you're an apprentice, no one's expecting you to know everything about a trade. Uh, as a matter of fact, they're not expecting you to know much of anything. So if you get a job as an apprentice, Take the attitude of, I'm here to learn, I'm here to grow, I'm here to get better. Not, I know everything already. Now, when a person is uh, admitted into an apprenticeship program, uh, they can expect to do on-the-job training and also uh, classroom uh, training. Now, uh, in, a in a traditional carpentry apprenticeship program, the total amount of OJL, which is on-the-job learning hours, it required is 8,000 hours, and that's equivalent to four years. Now, that's something that the uh, Department of Labor has come up with. That's not something that uh, contractors have dreamed up. Um, that, that's actually a federal requirement for a person to complete an apprenticeship program. Now, as the person... Uh, progresses through an apprenticeship program, they should receive raises. But now these raises are related to the knowledge and skills and work ethic of the apprentice. Uh, it doesn't really matter how long a person has been in the trade or how long they've been employed with a firm. Just because someone may have been employed with a firm two or three years, that doesn't guarantee them a raise. Now, um, after someone has completed the apprenticeship, they're referred to as a journeyman. This journeyman should possess the knowledge and motivation to work independently without constant supervision, or really without supervision at all uh, in most cases. Now here's a few types of carpentry. Uh, one type is rough carpentry. Rough carpentry would be framing, building concrete forms, uh, any kind of dock, bridge, docks and bridges and support for tunnels or sewers. Also house framing is considered rough carpentry. Finished carpentry is more having to do with trim. Um, stairs, trim, installing doors, uh, sometimes they may do floor covering. So that would be uh, finished carpentry. Okay, now um, characteristics and responsibilities that are possessed by carpenters um, number one is physical strength, uh, the ability to lift and move materials. A person that wants to be a carpenter should have good hand and eye coordination. They should be able to perform math. Um, and that doesn't always mean math where you would pull out your phone and, and do some calculations on your phone. You need to be able to do some of this math in your head. So if you're struggling with math, make sure that's something you make an effort to improve. Um, also, a Carpenters should be able to do a material takeoff for a job. And a material takeoff is just an estimate of how much and what types of materials are required to uh, complete a given job. Another thing that carpenters need to do is don't be lazy. They need to be hard workers. Um, don't, you, if, if you have a job in the carpentry trade, you shouldn't always expect someone to be telling you every little thing to do. You should take a little initiative and, um, and try to do some of this stuff without being told. Uh, and it kind of goes without saying, but um, more and more firms are drug testing these days. So um, a carpenter should not use drugs. Okay, now, when you are employed as a carpenter or in any trade, you should always um, work safely. You need to take initiative to perform your job without having to be told. You need to take pride in your work. Do the best work that you can. If somebody gives you a responsibility or a task, you should perform that task without further direction. Somebody shouldn't be coming around telling you get back to work or anything like that. You should go and complete the task you're given without having to be told. Okay, now tardies and absenteeism is a huge problem in the workforce today. 
<clears throat> um, if you have a job, it is your responsibility to be there on time every day. Um, if you're sick or if you have some type of emergency, you're not expected to be at work, but it needs to be a legitimate sickness, not just I don't feel good, um, or it needs to be a legitimate emergency. Okay, be on time. Show up, if you show up 10 minutes early for work and stay 10 minutes late every day, you would absolutely be amazed at how much that would help you in your career. Being late is a sign of poor work habits. It can result in negative consequences, such as not receiving raises or promotions, and excessive absences can even cost you your job. Um, and being at work means that you're not just there, you're rested and ready. And rested and ready means you shouldn't be staying up all night doing whatever. It means you should get to bed at a reasonable hour so that you can arrive at work um, with energy and being ready to go. Okay, attitude. Um, guys, as employees, we get paid to have a good attitude. We don't, we don't, we may not always feel like having a good attitude. We may not just wake up in a great mood, but hey, as an employee, we get paid to have a good attitude. Sometimes we just have to fake it. Sometimes we have to smile and pretend that we're happy about even being at work, even though inside we may be thinking, I'd rather be anywhere in the world but this, but here. Uh, we're paid to give our best effort, even if we don't feel like giving our best effort. Okay, now this is a really good example of uh, attitude. Uh, and one of my former students here at MSCA had interviewed for a job at Chick-fil-A. Now, he did a good job at the interview. He said the interview went fine, but when it was all over, they told him he didn't get the job because he did not smile enough during the interview. Now, when you go to Chick-fil-A, whether you like Chick-fil-A or not, most people would admit that they are friendly. Um, they're, they convey enthusiasm about their job. Uh, they make you believe that they're happy to be there. Um, and I think we can see an example of why Chick-fil-A has that reputation and why it feels that way when you go there because they start during the interview process getting people that are excited about working at Chick-fil-A. All right, Skills USA is a national organization that serves teachers and students that are involved in career and technical education. Um, Skills USA is an opportunity for you as a student to get involved in a professional organization. Uh, most professions have some sort of organization that you can join, um, and it's good for networking, it's good for meeting people, um, it's good for getting a, additional training, uh, and Skills USA is similar to that. We have a Skills USA chapter here at MSCA, and I would encourage you to get involved in it. Uh, take part in some of the competitions and events that we have. The mission of Skills USA is to assist its members in becoming world-class workers, leaders, and responsible citizens. Um, Skills USA is a partnership of teachers, students, and industry representatives. Uh, that work together to ensure that America has a skilled workforce. In its history, Skills USA has served more than 10 and a half million members. Okay, now your Skills USA chapter should have what's called a program of work. And the program of work simply outlines the activities and projects that the Skills USA chapter plans to undertake for that school year. Um, if, if, uh, if you're not aware of a program of work, you might want to speak with your advisor or your teacher and ask if you can see their program of work. That would give you a good idea of what to expect as a Skills USA member. All right, now let's talk just a little bit about safety. Uh, guys, it's, a lot of people think that OSHA is the bad guy. OSHA is actually, in my opinion, the good guy. Uh, OSHA is the government 
or legal entity that's responsible for uh, ensuring that Americans' workers arrive at home safely at the end of their workday every day. Um, they write rules and they enforce these rules, and all of these rules help to keep workers safe. Okay? One requirement that OSHA has and that most employers have is the completion of an OSHA 10 class. This is a basic safety class that is a requirement for admission on many job sites, and we do offer an OSHA 10 class here at our school. So when that comes around, make sure that you speak up and, and attend it. Okay, here's a few topics that are covered in the OSHA 10 class. PPE, which we all know stands for Personal Protective Equipment, Life-Saving Equipment, Health Hazards in Construction, and also the Focus 4. The Focus 4 is falls, struck by, uh, caught in between, and electrocution. And I, I think that I heard a uh, statistic that said that 57% or maybe higher than that of accidents in construction fall into one of these four categories. So that, that's one reason that that is <clears throat> a required topic in OSHA 10. All right, remember that safety is everyone's responsibility. And if you see something on a job site that you just think might be unsafe, you need to tell your supervisor. So that, that's very important. That's the end of the lesson today. Uh, I hope you have learned a little bit about uh, the carpentry trade and uh, the world of work in general. Uh, this has been the Muscle Shoals Career Academy Building Sciences Instructor, and thank you very much for listening.